Good morning, guys. Today we are doing Davina by Bagstock. Um, I tried to stay relatively true to the pattern, so it's got all the same pockets and stuff. Uh, I did do a couple of things different, like this bit here. Uh, but yeah, if you want to see how it's made, stay tuned. Alrighty, so I'm starting with my straps today because I want to watch the rainbow thread on my straps. So I've already folded one of them, um, and I've ironed the other one. Now I don't have to tuck under the raw edges because they will be in a seam. Because I'm trying to follow the pattern as closely as possible because tomorrow is the hacked version. So I'm just going to line this up along the edge like that. And I'm going to backstitch just to lock it in. I like backstitching. You should know this by now. All right. So I'm just centering my fabric in the middle of my vinyl and I've deliberately cut mine a little bit smaller so that the vinyl is going to poke out at each side. So I cut my vinyl at two inches wide and my fabric at one and a half so that I just get to see a little bit of vinyl on each side. It's also easier to do it this way than trying to line up your edges if your vinyl's the exact same width as your fabric. It can be done, but it takes a lot more patience, I guess. Stitching along. Now I'm going to stitch along the end, not because I need to, but just because it's quicker than chopping it off. And I'd also just like to point out, look, I don't know if you can see the rainbow, but it's very cool. <laughs> I've also put it in my bobbin thread, so I'll flip this over in a sec and show you the other side. So this thread was a gift from Susie, uh, who lives in the UK, because I don't know anywhere in Australia where I can get it, and she heard me say it in a video. And she sent me some, which was super beautiful, and I'm super excited. And I literally got it yesterday, so it's now today's video. <gasps> there we go. Look at that side. Look at it. It changes colour. Oh my god. I don't care if it's ridiculous and I'm excited. It looks amazing. Okay. Do the other one. I'm starting with the straps because I read quickly through the pattern. And when I say that, I looked at some pictures and I noticed that they did the straps first. So I thought I'd do the straps first. Just because... And with a new bobbin, I always like to do the straps first so that there's no join. So I'm just bending both sides into the center and then squishing them down. Turns out um, practice really does make perfect with trying to do it without drawing the line. And do both sides at once. Oops. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to do the next strap. So I'm putting the join on facing upwards and then the join of the fabric facing down so that we're not going to see any of them. I also picked a pinky purple vinyl. I was nearly going to do fluoro pink. Um, I had it pulled out, but then I thought maybe that's a bit much. Not that there's really any such thing, but I also thought that this pinky purple colour went better with my lining pink, because it's not fluoro. I actually originally got this fabric for Christmas off my, um, oops. Nope, something's gone wrong there. Um, I got this fabric off my... Uh, stepsister for Christmas so unfortunately I can't tell you where to get it from uh, but I did make myself a Nora by swoon out of it when I got it and so I've had it just sitting for a really long time so I'm switching it up and using it in a video because it's really pretty so this fabric is actually rainbow colored Disney princesses with half sugar skull faces because, you know, dare to be different. Oh, I love that it changes colour. Okie dokie. So 
to see. We've got Disney Princess Half Sugar Skull. Each to their own, but I like it. All right, so I'm going to start just eliminating pattern pieces so that I've got less pieces sitting on my table. So I'm going to start with the gusset pieces. So I'm going to take my base of my lining, my gusset, and then just stitch them together. So I'm going to go back to a joining stitch, which for me is two and a half. And then I'm going to chain stitch this. So I'm just going to swing around the other side, grab the other gusset and sit it on. Back stitch and then stitch down the end. Because I like chain stitching. So there's now the gusset. So I can pop that aside and I've gone from three pieces to one. And then I'm going to do the same to the vinyl pieces. So I've already fused the foam onto these to make it a little bit easier for me. Uh, we're also going to put bag feet on because I have rainbow bag feet. So we're also doing rainbow hardware because rainbow everything today. Rainbow fabric, rainbow thread, rainbow hardware. This is going to be like the loudest bag ever. And I may not want to sell it once I finish it. We'll see. I don't need another bag at the moment, but you never know. I might just want it anyway. Uh, so if you're new to sewing also, I would be clipping this. So grab some Wonder Clips uh, because vinyl is actually quite slippery. I've just been sewing so long I don't really need them. But you should definitely Wonder Clip it because it will hold it more steady for you. And you should always backstitch at the start and the end and then trim your tails. Now just to make this look really, really pretty and add some extra rainbow, I'm going to fold this seam open and flat like this. And then I'm going to top stitch it with a decorative stitch length. So it's going to hold them down and be decorative and pretty because it's literally going to change. And yes, I still back stitch on all sides. And by doing a longer stitch length, this just makes it look a little bit prettier. Trim my tails. And so then we're going to do the other side. Back stitch. I actually don't know if this is in the pattern or not. I didn't check. But this is just something I like to do on gussets. It helps it sit nicer, I think. But, again, if you hate top stitching or if you're new to sewing, you can skip this. On the other hand, if you're starting top stitching, it's a good place to start because it's just a little flat, straight area. I don't know. Up to you. World's your oyster. It's your bag. Okay, let's add some bag feet. So I've got my rivet bag feet, of which I'm waiting on my next shipment of because I've nearly used them all. I think this is actually the last of the lot in my stash, so I might have to go raid the website stash in a minute. But I do have enough, so I've got four bag feet here. I believe the bigger size asks for six bag feet instead of four, uh, but the little one wants four. So we're just going to grab our template. Hold on, and I'll grab the rivet press. Two uh, cam presses so I don't have to switch them each time I want to use them, which is really cool. Um, and I've just punched holes in my pattern piece with like a paper hole punch. So now I'm just going to make sure that it's even and I'm just going to mark with a pen where I want the bag feet to sit. So I do like that the pattern has a placement. It's much easier to do it that way. And so then we're just going to stick it under. So this is my hole punch now. So I'm just going to squish it under and it's going to punch the holes for me. Um, so for those that are about to ask me where I got this from, the answer is Green Beans Australia. 
I'm pretty sure in America you can get the um these on Amazon. But I don't hold me to that because I don't live in America, so I don't actually know. But I do see a lot of people say they got theirs from Amazon, so I assume that they're still on there. So now I'm just pushing the backs through so that I've got all four backs sticking up. And then you can just kind of press these on. So you hear them or you feel them kind of push down and they kind of click in. I don't know if you heard that. I could hear it. And then from the top, I'm just using my normal rivet press and giving them a gentle squeeze. I don't know what size rivet press this is because it actually come with my machine when I bought it. Um, but it's got a lot of rubber on the outside so it can go around this bigger dome. So I don't need to buy a separate um, set to put the feet in. But now we have bag feet. And they're all nice and squished and flat. Um, so now we can move on. I can put that aside because we don't need that yet. And we might move on to the zipper closure because that's what this piece is. I did semi set them up, I promise. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is put all the pieces right sides down so that I can put some double sided tape on one end. So if you care which way these are, so mine don't really matter because they're all quite non directional. Uh, but if it matters, you put them together like this, so the way that you want them, and then you put your double sided tape. So we're going to flip it this way so that you can put your double sided tape at the end that you want. Um, if you've got a non-directional pattern or if you don't think it's going to matter that much, that's okay. So some people like these facing out. Some people like them both facing the same way. So it's a personal preference on how you'd like to build your bag, but it is just something that you may want to think about. Sometimes a happy accident occurs and it works out for you anyway. So I just thought I'd bring it up so that you guys know. So then I'm going to peel off the backing of all the double-sided tape I just did. You can peel them one at a time and then measure and fold if you want, or you can just peel it all off. I'm just doing it all at once because I can, really. Okay, so now you just want to measure and you want to fold over half an inch I think they said either way I'm gonna do half an inch I could be wrong but that's what we're doing now so if you've cut your pieces the wrong size now's the perfect chance to be able to make them all exactly the correct size So I'm just using the ruler that's on my table. Uh, if you don't have one, you could probably go to a fishing shop and get one of those fishing rulers that they have for guys to stick on their, um, what's it called, esky. It's still a measurement and it's still a true size, so it would still work for you in this particular instance. Okay, so now these are all the same size. So you want to take some zipper tape um, and then I don't know how much the pattern says I know I said I was going to do it as close to the pattern as possible but I forgot to check this so I'm just going to add five inches because unfortunately I don't know and that looks good I don't want my tail too insanely long um, but you also don't want it too short so and then I'm just going to melt the ends with a lighter that is important as it will stop it fraying and being annoying so I'm just gonna split the zip a little bit not a lot and then I'm gonna fold it down so it sits at a right angle like this uh, so you're gonna have like a bit of a bump no matter which way you fold it you're gonna fold it as a right angle and then we're just going to tack it down or baste it 
make sure that we back stitch so it doesn't come undone. So it's just a couple of stitches. And then we're going to do the same to the other side so that they sit evenly. That's where I want it to sit, so that's where I'm going to stitch it. Oops, and I just let go. That's even to there. Once you're happy that they're even and that you've basted them down, chop your tails off, as always. So I'm happy that they're even, so I'm just going to separate that so I can work with it one at a time and it's going to be easier. So grab one of your lining pieces and one of your outer pieces. And the end that we folded over is the end that's not folded over with the zip. So we want to put the raw edge with the folded edge of the zip. And then we're going to clip that in place because apparently mine doesn't want to sit. Grab Scully. Somebody named him for me. Uh, so officially his name or its name is Scully. I like that because I like Monsters Inc. So that's cool. Also, if you're into X-Files. All right. So I clipped that one in place. And then I'm going to take the other one and put it right sides down and then add it into the clips. Now, if you've ever watched one of my videos, you know that I don't like trying to clip three things at the same time. So I usually baste one of them, or in this particular instance, I clip two together and then come back and do the third. So I'm going to start at this end because it's easier. And I want to start right on that fabric. So I don't want to stitch on the zip. I just want to stitch on the fabric. So we're going to do two stitches forward. Or three in my case because I missed. And then I'm just running the edge of my foot along the zipper. Now when we get to the end, I'm going to go needle down, pivot, and sew over the end like this. So that means we've just sewn over the zipper tape. I'm going to trim my tails now so that they don't get in my way. And then I'm also going to trim this corner down so that it's going to sit nicer when I turn it. Like so. So then we just push it out. See, that was a good colour combo choice. Very excited for this bag. Alright, so then we're just going to tug so that it comes away from the zip. And then we're going to want to top stitch this. So you can either finger press it, which is what I'm doing, or you can use your iron if you want it to have a more permanent press. And then we're just going to top stitch one eighth of an inch from the edge. So I want to make sure that my lining is coming out far enough. So I'm just tugging on it with my fingers to make sure that it's going to sit nicely. Now I won't actually put my zipper pull on this zip until the very last thing. It's like the last thing I do on a bag. And then you can just chop it off. Now... If you want to, you can baste along this raw edge to hold the edges together. You just want to do it at the one eighth of an inch seam allowance. But that's one side done. So now we're just going to do exactly the same to the other side. So raw edge to folded edge of zip. And these are both facing up the right way. So you've got lining right sides up and the zipper is facing so that the teeth are up. And again, you could base this instead of clipping it if you want to. Um, everything comes down to time versus money. So I could do this, but I'm going to use more of my amazing thread. 
So in this particular instance, I prefer to clip. Then I'm going to get the folded edge and match it up with the other folded edge, which these should be the same size anyway, because we just kind of measured that out before. But on the off chance that one is slightly longer or shorter, by doing it this way, the dodgy end can be at the end we're going to sew, so it won't matter. Okay. So now I'm going to start at the raw end. So I'm going to do quarter inch over and then pivot and down. And then you want your zipper to be up against the side of your foot. Obviously, depending on what foot you use. And then when we get to the end, we want to stitch up to, but not off the fabric. Trim your tails, which I'm sure you're all sick of me saying, but I'm going to keep doing it. I'm already sitting here talking to myself. May as well remind myself things while I'm at it. All right. Turn it out the right way. Now, you will find with this edge that you don't get a perfect, uh, like, right angle. That's okay. That's normal normal for me anyway so I'm just tugging on that to kind of make a better crease and then again line it up and we're going to top stitch an eighth of an inch from the edge if you want to you can crank your top stitch up to something wider and longer I didn't do it on one side so I won't be doing it on this side you want to keep everything kind of the same so I'm tugging on the fabric, making sure everything's nice and flat. You could also iron this. That would work as well. And then backstitch when you get to the end. So that's that bit done. Now we can pop them aside. And I'm going to go on to the lining. Ah. Ah. So this is the bottom part of the lining. I'm going to do my zipper pocket. So we just need one of them. And it says to cut two. If you want to, you can just cut one big one. I'm just going to join it now to pretend it's one big one. Oops, trim your tails. Okay, so now I can measure my zipper box onto here. So I'm going to take a ruler and a pen. I actually just picked up the lid that time. That's why I did a double take. I'm sure that looked really weird. All right, so I, I'm gonna change the pattern probably. I don't actually know what size pocket I meant to do so I'm just going to come in three quarters of an inch from the edge of this um and the reason I do three quarters of an inch is because when I'm trying to stitch down the side I don't want it to be difficult I like to be efficient aka lazy so the three quarters of an inch gives me enough that I can get any kind of seam allowance without having to kind of overly tug at the side of the fabric so that's my beautiful zipper box. So then I'm just going to center it up onto my panel uh, with the non drawn on side floating upwards. You want to make sure it's even so you can either measure it or you can do what I do and finger measure it like so. I also don't want it too close to this edge because I'm going to have my other zip poking out from here. So you could actually, if you wanted to, bring it all the way down. To to there but then we're going to have the corner issue so I kind of just make sure it's not going to be in the seam allowance and that's where I want it I'm sure the pattern has an actual measurement of where to put it uh, and I probably should have read it but I didn't needle down pivot Alright, 
right, so now we're going to cut the center of that rectangle that we just stitched. So the easiest way to get in there is to fold it in half and clip it with your scissors. Um, if you're finding that your hand can't do it, you can actually pinch the end and it gives it like an added pressure, which makes it cut easier. So then I'm just going to cut as close to the center as I can. And then when I get about half an inch from the end, I'm going to triangle out to the corners. I still haven't looked up what this is actually called. And I probably will forget after doing this video anyway. So I'm just going to call it triangling out the corners. So you get a triangle. So you want to get as close to your stitches as you can without clipping your stitches. Uh, if you do accidentally clip your stitches, just move back like a stitch or two's width and then st stitch it shut again. Alright, so I've pushed the pocket through the hole and now I'm just going to roll the fabric and finger press it. You could also use an iron. Um, I'm probably going to need to get a portable ironing board so I could just iron right here. Bringing my whole iron's a bit ridiculous though. Okay. So I'm just finger pressing that. So I'm kind of using my fingernail to score the edges and create that crease. There's the zipper pocket though. So I'm going to take some more zipper tape. So I just cut it the width of the pocket so that the edges are going to be in the seam at the side. If you don't want to do that, that's fine. You can cut it just slightly bigger than your zipper pocket. But you are going to have to put a tab on the end so that you don't see the raw zipper and that will help stop the fraying and it will be neater and nicer to touch. So I'm just going to add on my zipper pull. I'm going to see if I can do it hand, well, like, without my zipper jig. Uh, if you'd like to see how my zipper jig works, I did a two minute video that you can watch. So there is my rainbow zipper pull on my zipper. I'm getting better at doing it without one. That's exciting. It's kind of ironic really. When I first started buying zippers by the meter, I couldn't do it and all I wanted was a zipper jig. And now that I've got a zipper jig, I've worked out how to do it without one. Okay. So now I'm just going to hold the zip in the center of this gap. Uh, if you want to, you could put some double-sided tape on the other side to hold it in place for you. I am just advanced enough now that I don't need to do that. You could also pin it with some pins. You can pin zipper tape, it's just tricky and difficult. It can be done. Double-sided tape, in my opinion, is quicker. But if you have issues where it's constantly gumming up your needle, maybe you'd want to try the pin option. Or just practice doing this. So I zip and unzip the zipper pull so it's out of my way while I'm stitching. Okay. So cool because it's rainbow. So now, when you pick this up, your zipper pocket should fall perfectly even with the other one. So now I can just fold over this and stitch here. And because I left that three quarters of an inch, that's going to be really, really easy to do. You don't have to do a three quarter inch seam. You don't want to be right up against the zip. That's tricky and unnecessary. I think I'm doing about three eighths thereabouts. I'd like my pocket as big as possible, but not so big that I have a seam that will fray. So there we go. One side done. And I'm also going to open that zipper because I will be turning my bag through here. Pop that aside. Grab the next side. And then somewhere here, I also have here they are. 
another pocket. So I'm going to put a pocket on this side as well. So I've cut two lining pieces. You could also, if I wanted to, I could have done one in the interior or the exterior fabric so that it's like an accent on the inside of the bag. But I didn't. I think because I don't have enough fabric to do that, I think I ran out. And so then I'm going to do... I'm going to do a half inch seam. The less seam you do, the taller your pocket will be. So I'm just right sides together, stitching them both together, making sure I back stitch at the start and the end. Trim my tails. Fold this over. So I'm going to finger press it open first, because I find it easier to then bend it over like that. And so now I'm going to top stitch. So I'm going to put my stitch length up to, I'll go all the way up to four today. I really want to see my stitches. Okay. On an industrial machine, if you're new to industrial machines, you're actually meant to hold your threads when you stitch so that they don't get sucked back into the machine. That happens to me like all the time. So for those that have just got a machine or you don't use it much and you should, that's what you're meant to do. So I'm just making sure that this is lined up at the bottom as well because they are meant to be the same size. And if I stitch one that's the wrong size, it's gonna be harder later. Well, next, really, not really later. Because I am now going to attach that to the other side. So I'm just going to line it up. Um, and I also want to find the center. So I'm going to fold it in half like this and crease the center. Because that's the easiest way to find it. And then I'm going to stitch one eighth of an inch each side of that center crease. So for me, I'm going to put my foot... So my toe on the left, I'm going to put the center of my toe on the crease that I just did so that I can do a stitch line. And then I'm going to back stitch at the bottom. Actually, and then to save thread, you can just turn around and go back up. And then back stitch. I like it. So now your pocket is on. So now I'm just going to also baste around this corner because this is the side that I'm going to leave open for the bag. So it's going to be much easier if this is one piece rather than two flapping around. So I'm just going to, with a 1 8 seam allowance, and I'm just going to leave it on the stitch length it is because it doesn't matter. Now again, if you're new to bag making, pin that. If you're an intermediate, maybe try and do it without pins. Take a, take a risk. Because if you stuff up that seam, you literally don't see it, so it doesn't matter. It's just to hold everything, so it's now one solid piece. Okay. Happy days. I like how it looks so far. So now we can go back to our zipper panels that we just made and we're going to centre these as well. So you can either measure or you can just fold it in half and this I already folded in half so I know where the centre is and then just clip it on. That may look lazy to you, I call it efficient as of recently. I actually used to just call it lazy. If everything's perfectly in half, you're guaranteed to easily find the center. So I'm going to clip that on. I'm using lots of clips because I'm teaching you bad habits of not clipping anything ever. So that looks like that. And then somewhere here, I have a top piece. As you can see, I'm not overly organized at the moment. This is why I try and eliminate as many pieces as possible so I've got less hanging around. Okay, so we're looking for the top lining of the bag. That's my top exterior, as you can tell by the pretty, pretty fabric. That's my front and back. Aha! 
here we go top lining now again if I wanted to I could have actually made this out of the exterior fabric but I didn't and then I'm just gonna come along and add this into the clips so the other thing I could have done before as well is instead of clips if you don't own clips yet you can baste everything so I could have stitched the zipper thing on and then laid this on top and stitched again but I didn't because that's not what I'm doing apparently okay and grab this again so we're gonna find the center you can even do a little clip uh, but don't use your snips uh, I have cut myself way too many times I've learnt my lesson I now get scissors because I don't like cutting myself it's not ideal and on your fingers it takes so much longer to heal I need my hands for things like horse riding right so now that I've done the clips, I can just line that up with that one. Boom. And then I can put less clips on this if I want to. I can just clip both ends, really. Depends on your advanced level. There's no right or wrong answer to clips, and nobody's judging you with how many clips you put on. I promise. Oh, well, I'm not judging you. Not that my opinion matters anyway. It's your bag. You do it how you like. But the more clips, the more stable it's going to be. So if you think that you're going to have something that moves, I would suggest more clips. If you're doing like an outside piece with foam, it's pretty stable and isn't going to float around. All right, back to adjoining stitch. So again, for me, is two and a half. I believe it works in mils, like millimeters. Even if it doesn't, I'm pretending like it does. And different machines are different lengths at the same number. So I know a mate that's got a Singer, one of the domestic Singers, and their size 4 is my size 2. So I mean, it's a bit iffy. Make sure we backstitch. Now, with backstitching, you only need a couple of stitches. You don't need to do it so it's like this long. You need like three stitches. So now, we got sides. We got another side. And we're going to grab our gusset. Now, I always leave my gap on the opposite side to where my zipper pocket is. I find it easier to get into, and so that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to find the center of this by folding it in half. Um, if you don't tape two of your pieces together, you could actually just mark the center. So when I cut my pieces, I will print double and then tape them on the fold so that I don't have to deal with the fold because I find I waste more fabric if I cut on the fold because I'm too lazy to adjust it like that eighth time so I'm just gonna I'm just joining up the seams because even if my seams were crooked which I'm sure they're not but let's pretend they were at least this is still the center of the base is important So, this is the one I want to leave open, and I always like to do that one first, in case I forget. I can leave the opening on the zipper side, I just find it more difficult. Because you're trying to pull this up through the pocket, I just find it that it falls through the pocket easier if you do the opposite one. But again, you don't have to listen to me. And I'm also opening out this seam. This is great for people using domestic machines because it's going to make the seam thinner. And then I'm going to come up to the top and I'm going to clip the top and then work my way down. So I've got this seam facing up. And then I'm just going to work this into the sides. Right, 
more clips, the happier you'll be. Um, you know what? My zipper pocket is actually bigger than the base, so I might just stitch it shut. I'm just looking at that going, mm, is it really going to matter? And the answer is probably not. So the reason that we clip from the bottom down and the middle up is because if I just clipped from here, you wouldn't account for all this seam allowance and this would actually go off the end. So by starting by joining it at the end, you ensure that you're going to make sure all the fabric is accounted for in the bag. Okay. So if you're also having trouble, hold it like a 3D object. I haven't said that in a while. So hold it how it's going to sit. And I always put the clips facing the gusset piece because that's the way I'm going to stitch it. So it sits up like this and then we're going to stitch from here. Making sure we back stitch at the start. Again, only, you know, a few stitches. Also make sure that you're pulling the tail of your zip out of the seam. You don't want to stitch that in here. And clean up your clips as you go. They get too many, they get in your way, and then they'll annoy you. We don't want that. Excellent. Now, if you've got some zigzag scissors or pinking shears, you can come along and just clip down the corners so that it's going to sit flatter. As you can tell, mine are very blunt. I think I've cut one too many zips with them now. Um, but to be fair, they did last me quite a few years. I think two or three years. And they were under $20 when I bought them, so that's pretty good for scissors. Ah, love it. Next side. So again, we're going to start... You can start at the top or you can start at the center. But either way, you're going to do a couple of each and then go to the other one anyway. So I just want to, again, make sure that this zip is tucked in. Uh, if you're finding that it's giving you grief and getting in your way, you can actually come in here and clip it to itself like this. All right, so you can put one clip there and just fold it on itself like this and put one clip there. And that way, it's not going to get into your seam. And it'll stop annoying you. You won't get so frustrated with it. Not that I'm frustrated with it, but that's just, you know, something you might want to know. So then I'm matching up my little notches that I made. Um, it turns out you can get a pattern notcher, so it cuts little divots for you, which may be a very good idea. And again, we're going to open this. So because we opened out the seam on this end, we want to do the same to this side as well. Like so. Um, so pattern notches are a potentially very cool thing. I don't have one. I also probably won't buy one because I've got enough gadgets in this room that I'm like running out of space to store them all as it is. My 3D printer is currently taking up a lot of my space and I got one skull out of it and now it won't print. So I'm about ready to throw it across the room, to be honest. I had plans. I was going to get five skull balls done between now and Sunday. And I was also trying to do the little coffin... Pools for spooky week 
and nope so i gotta wait till the um technician guy is available see if he can help me 3d printers who knew they were going to be so fiddly once it prints it's fine it's getting the bottom layer to behave itself that i have issues with So again, make sure you clean up all your clips as you go. And again, we just push all of this out of the way. It's the lining. Uh, so it's pretty... Oh, I just ran out of thread. Did you guys hear that? Because I did. The more you sew, the more in tune you become with your machines. You can hear when something's like off. I was smart enough to do a second bobbin. Yay. I may or may not need a third. I'm not sure. I think I should be right because I've already done the handle. But you never know. So I'm just going to come back like four stitches and re-stitch over the last four because what that's going to do is it's going to lock the last lot so it doesn't slowly unravel on me. And then I'm going to come and trim all the tails that I can see because I've stopped trimming them which is naughty of me. And my bin's so full I think they just fell on the floor anyway. Okay. You can unclip this now. Your zipper because it's not going to get into the seams anymore. So I'm going to grab my zipper, uh, my zipper scissors, my zigzag scissors, or my pinking shears, whatever you guys call them. I like to call them zigzag scissors. It's more fun to say. And there's not many opportunities in life where I get to say zigzag. And I'm rambling about scissors again. Sorry. Right. Turn your lining the right way out. Technically, you're done. Looks awesome. So I'm going to pop that uh, here. Next to you guys. So I'm sorry if I just knocked the camera. The next lot of pieces I have are a front and a back outside. The top half of a front and a back. A vinyl accents. Pocket. And I also need my handles. And I forgot to trim my tails. Look at that. See, this is why I have to say it out loud or I forget. Alrighty. So the taller one of the two is the back. That's how I tell, right? So see how there's a different height? That one's the front, this one's the back. So the front is going to have the pocket and the funky zip. Now I did cut the zip pieces. Um, and I've got some zip here. But I did have an epiphany on this. Because I use zipper tape by the yard, I don't see why I couldn't just do all of it and put the connector over it. This was my latest thought that I had. So I could literally just fold double-sided tape because it's easier. I was thinking about this while I was ironing it, to be honest. Um, so fold both sides into the center like this. And then I could literally just stitch it over because it's the same principle. You should use your zipper scissors for this. Mine are, I don't even know where they've ended up anymore. So, I'm still need to find the center like this and I'm still going to have my two zipper pulls one at each end but I can just actually I will put some double sided tape on it to place it
Because why? I don't understand why I would cut it just to join it when I can just put like a fake join. Ta-da! Fake join! I like it. Now I just top stitch it. Obviously, if you were using two zips, you'd join it the way you meant to. But because I use zipper tape by the yard, and I know a lot of you do. Oh, they have started with the bombs again. Or the big guns, or I don't really know. Whatever, it's fine. Okay, so this is a square. So it doesn't matter which side I use first. So I'm going to put this right sides up, my zip right sides up, this bad boy right sides down, and stitch along the edge. Now, again, if you're new to sewing, use some clips or some pins if you don't have clips. The only thing I would recommend not pinning is vinyl. That is definitely a wonder clip job. I'm going to move Scully so that we don't drop them everywhere. Bend it over, crank it up. I'm going to top stitch. Back stitch. Pull this out. And then this side comes up to the top so that we fold the pocket and then I'm just going to base stitch this to the very very edge until I build all the other parts. So this is very very close, it's like one eighth of an inch from the edge. It's just somewhere I know I'm not going to see that. Trim off my tails and then just smooth this down like so and then I'm going to stitch the two lines that come down the center to separate out the pockets. Down like that and then I'm going to go up the other side making sure that the pocket is down. I'm not stitching around the sides because I haven't got my zipper pulls on yet. And I haven't put my zipper pulls on yet because that's not where I'm up to. I am up to taking these and I did actually check this measurement. So I'm going to fold these in half, clip them. So both the front and the back, so I'm going to do them at the same time. All the handles. Like so. And then it does actually tell me the measurement in the pattern. And I was smart enough to check that because I didn't think I would remember. Which is pretty true because I don't have the best memory. So I'm not telling you the measurements because if you want to know the measurements you should buy the pattern. Uh, this is just a guide on how to do it. I quite often get um, messages on YouTube saying, you didn't tell me measurements, what are the measurements? And the official answer is, support the pattern designers. Okay. Handle. At the measurement. Um, and then they want you to stitch up a certain amount. So I'm going to mark that with my friction texture. And to be honest, I don't remember what it is, so I'm kind of making it up. This one I don't remember, so don't don't quote me on this because I don't know. I just think that looks good, so that's where I'm going to go. So I'm going to measure that on both the handles because uh, the pattern doesn't have handle connected. You just sew it straight into the seam. So that's what we're doing. 
And the next video that I'm going to do, which should be tomorrow, I'm actually going to change the pattern to have a crossbody strap because I have a, a lady that wants one. And we're adding a few other things as well. Okay, so I'm just lining that up and then I'm going to stitch, add a back stitch as well. And I'm on a nice decorative length so it looks pretty. Then I'm going to go across. It's going to look extra pretty because it's rainbow. Yes, I'm still obsessed with the rainbow. And I'm also going to put rivets in these. Um, I even remember to grab them for the video. Look at me go. So then the way I do this so that it's not twisted is I smooth it out like this and then I hold it flat and swing it round. Where's my mark? There, there it is. The accident. So I'm also stitching from the bottom up so that my tails will be in the seam and we're not going to see it. Uh, and if you wanted to and you don't like having handles like this, you can also stitch them with strap connectors, what I'm doing, and then attach them to, to the connectors. Down and back stitch. Okay, next piece. So again, line it up. Make sure it's straight. Uh, you could also put some double-sided tape on the back of here. So it holds it in place while you're stitching it. Double-sided tape is your friend. Um, and you could actually put it so you don't even stitch over it. You could put it right down the centre. Trim off your tail. Oh, look, it's already trimmed off and in my fingernail. Fantastic. All right, so again, smooth it out. Bring it round. Hold it down. And then twist it back. One more, twist, down, twist, love it. All right, so I'm going to put some rivets in, so I'm going to measure them to make sure I put them in the right spot, not that there's really a right or a wrong spot, but I'd like it on the same spot on all four of my handles. So I personally am measuring half an inch down from where I stitched, um, but I think the pattern has, I actually don't know where they put them, but I want them nice and high. I do a quarter inch, but then I'm going to hide my beautiful rainbow stitching, so I don't want to do that. If this was just black stitching, I'd probably only do it a quarter, so it's holding right up uh, where the stitching is for the handles. But, all right, hole punch one. So I'm going to punch all four holes. This is really, really good if you have arthritis in your hand. I don't, but I also don't want to get it. This is a great option, and it's an arm workout a little bit. I mean, not really. And other one, rainbow. So I'm going to push my post through and then put the cap on the back. And again, I'm probably just being excessive with all the rainbow, but I think it'll look fabulous. Post through. Now, if you're using um, single post rivets where they don't have the cap on both sides, just on the little bit, um, you just push the post up from the back like so, and then you won't see you won't see this bit. So realistically, I could use any any piece here because you won't see it. So if you accidentally bought single capped rivets, which I have done back when I first started, I didn't realize there was a difference. I just thought they were all called rivets, so I bought the cheapest ones I could find, and they were the cheapest because they were only single capped. So, not gonna lie, I still have a bunch there, 
um because they're in antique bronze so when i make an antique bronze bag i will use them on the seams where you won't see it okay accent strip so i use vinyl um you can use fabric for your accent strip just make sure you put interfacing on it to make it that little bit thicker i'm going to go back to adjoining length and then i'm going to put this on here and stitch it and i also made sure that i haven't put rivets in my seam if you were worried about doing that if you were going to put two rivets instead of one what you would do is you would stitch this and then do the rivets and that will help you prevent that problem and i'm going to chain stitch so i'm going to grab my other one line it up shove it under off we go making sure we back stitch and then you can just chop it off and i had no tail at that end huzzah and i'll have no tail at this end either actually Actually, and then I can just not have tails again. I'm going to crank it up to a decorative length. I'm going to fold this down. So I'm folding the vinyl or the accent strip down because we don't want to try and fold that. That'll be too hard. And then I'm going to stitch along here, which again is going to look fabulous. Now, if you're super scared of top stitching or it's not something you've done or whatever, you could probably stitch skip this I like top stitching because it kind of flattens everything out but if you were worried for whatever reason you could skip it Separate those. So now we can just grab our back piece and stitch the back piece on. So again, back to adjoining length. Chop off this one. And then we can spin this actually yeah, then we can join the other one so this is now going to join to the zipper like so chop that one off Then I'm going to top stitch, but I'm going to fold this up so again I'm going to stitch the vinyl. So we're going to have two stitches on the vinyl. This is just going to help it sit flat and be glorious. And so the same with this one, we're going to fold the vinyl up. Trim that one off before it hits the camera and knocks you off. Okie dokie. Look at that. I'm very excited. Okay, so now I'm going to go over and iron this on. Um, so I'm going to pause so you don't have to watch that. And then when I come back, so I'm going to have it on both. Um, I know that the this one that wanted you to put the, the stuff here and here, but I just want to put it on the back. That's my choice. Then I'm going to put the zipper pulls on after I've ironed it so that they're not in the way. Okie dokie, I'll be back. I also put my zipper pulls on um, because basically I forgot to record, uh, but you just slip them on at the side, so that was good. Um, so I've got my foam on. So it just means that the front bit's not foamed, but the whole bag is. Um, which is fine. 
I also didn't, I've only pressed kind of mainly this bottom half because I didn't want to wreck my vinyl. So the top's a little bit floaty. If you wanted to, you could also top stitch the whole way around and that would help. So now we're going to put in our gusset. So I'm going to fold this together with the seams lined up and then clip the halfway point. And then clip the other side of the halfway point. And then I'm going to find the middle of the panel. So this is the back panel. You can do the front or the back panel. Doesn't really matter. We're going to attach them both anyway. So I'm going to match up that middle notch. And I'm going to put at least three clips in. If you just put one clip, it can move around too much. And therefore, it's already come uneven. So we're going to match up both of these and then I'm going to clip two that way and I'm going to clip two the other way as well. I also want my clips facing the gusset, which mine here are not. Uh, it just makes for easier pulling off, I guess. And then we're going to come up to the side, make sure nothing's twisted and we're going to clip this top. So that it's even there. Oh, I also forgot to mention, if you put strap connectors with little D-rings, don't put your straps on till the end. Because they will then just annoy you and be in your way. Which is something we don't want. So I'm just going to keep clipping around. Making sure that my clips are facing the gusset. Again, because it makes the pulling them off part easier. And then come to the other side. Now, you'll notice I'm using a lot of clips. That is mainly so it doesn't shift while I'm stitching. Um, and also because I'm now fighting like layers of foam. And the foam is quite firm and doesn't, it, it can be maneuvered, but it doesn't like to be. So, I need to clip it with lots of clips so it doesn't shift while I'm trying to stitch it. Stole a clip. There we go. So that may seem like a lot of clips, um, but I'm okay with it. Like I said, there's no right or wrong. So now I'm just going to squash all this down and start up here on my right because I've got the main bulk of my bag out. That was way too many stitches before I back stitched but my hand was a bit slow. Your back one should be the easy one because it's got minimal extra pieces going on. So I like to stitch the easy one first. That's something I've always done. It's just... Why have two hard sides when you can do an easy one before we have to fight the weight of everything? And then backstitch when we get to there. Now again, I should I don't have to be using my rainbow thread for this because it's not going to be seen. Alright, now, problem number one. I've got a little bit of a tuck in this corner. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm actually going to unpick it and fix it. I don't want it there. So I'm just going to unpick probably, oh, I don't know, that much. Three inches. So that I can manoeuvre that excess out of a pinch spot. If I pull like that, that's all fixed itself. And so now I'm just going to add a lot more clips than I had to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Right? That's because I rushed and I didn't put enough clips on that curve. I did think it was going to do it, but it's a good troubleshooting thing. Alright, so we backstitch, preferably don't throw all your clips on the floor. And we just want to go slightly past where we were. I 
Okay. Pinch gone. That's how you fix that. All right, next side. So again, fold it in half and find the center. Although we should already know where the center is because our stitches come down to there. So we're gonna clip that onto that with the clips facing the gusset. And we're gonna put some on this side as well to hold everything in place. Like that. Gusset, that way, there we go. Sorry. It's sidetracked in my brain. There's a lot going on up here today. Clip around the curve. Lots of clips to avoid any pinching a second time round. I do not like unpicking, it's annoying. I mean, I'll do it if I have to, but if the option's there not to, it's definitely something I'm gonna take. So, more clips. Like that, look at that, that's way more clips. But, I'm also fairly confident it's not gonna move now. And then I'm gonna go down a few. like that and then I'm going to come back to the curve at this end making sure it's coming all the way out and matching up Like that, I need some more clips, and then we can stitch around. Ha ha! Love it! Okay, stitch and then back stitch, and then off we go. Clean up your clip mess as you go so that it doesn't get in your way. Again, you just want to double check that everything's looking nice in there, which it is. I've caught all my sides. I am happy. Excellent. So, shove your handles in, grab your lining, and then you just want to think about where you want what pocket. Um, you may, you may care, you may not, you may just want to shove it in and off we go. That is entirely up to you. Uh, now, I always start with the small part. So I'm going to line up the two seams. So the seam from the outside, the seam from the lining, and add a clip. And then I'm going to do the same to the other end. Because I like to do the small areas first. Probably because it's quicker. I feel like I've achieved something. So do these small ends, line them up with the seams, and I'm making my um, clips face the lining because I'm going to sew it with the lining side up. You don't have to, but I'm going to. And then we just add some clips on to hold it all together nice and evenly. Actually make sure you're making it even though, that's important. Can't just be whacking them on willy nilly. Won't do anything. 
And if all your seams are correct, it should fit gloriously well. Uh, if it doesn't, you can actually just go, like, unclip it and go back and take a little bit off whichever side is too big and just kind of V the corner in a little bit more. And then it'll fit. Make sure the clips face the right way before we start sewing, because I promise it's easier. Right. Clipped all the way around. So I'm going to start up here on the flat bit so that it's easier to get into. I'm just going to take off one clip and slide the bag in. Do a couple of stitches and back stitch. And then off we go. So slow and steady wins the race so that you get a nice even seam at the top. Needle down and then I'm going to readjust the bag. So it's a 3D object so I'm treating it as such and pulling it around the machine. just going to do it because I'm going to show you is we're going to cut out the bulk at the four join sections so what this is going to do is it's going to help us be able to do our top stitching when we turn the bag through so if you chop out that little bit of bulk in those corners you're going to get a nice smooth top stitch so pocket aligning hand in, grab an edge, doesn't matter which one, anyone will do, and then just pull it through. You basically want to turn the bag inside out, and then squish it like this, and you can actually just pull your lining pocket over it all. As soon as you get to that point, you know you're home free. All right, and then I'm just going to grab this, hold that, and pull through. Look at that. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. So then I'm going to put my hand back into the bag and push out all the edges. Like so. Love it. And so then now I'm going to stitch close the zipper pocket. If you have little fabric tags, this is a really good seam to pop them in. I find that I personally, if, when I used to buy bags, if I had like tags hanging out places that annoyed me, I'd cut them off. Whereas in the bottom of a pocket, they're more likely to leave it there. Also, if I was making this bag to sell, I would have, um, I hadn't decided, but I would put my logo here between the bag feet because that's the new thing that I am doing. All right, push your pocket in, zipper up, shove your lining in, and then we just need to top stitch. Now, if you're new to top stitching, whack on some clips. This is going to hold it while we get to the top stitching. Whoops. This is going to be very, very easy for me to top stitch because I kept the foam out of the uh, top section where I was going to stitch. So the pattern actually did that for me, which was nice. Um, which means that this is now not two layers of foam, but only one. 
So you just want to maneuver it. If you've got um, thick seams here, mine's not really thick, but I'm going to show you. These are leather working pliers. So in here is smooth. They've got no teeth. So when you squish things, it doesn't leave an imprint. It just squishes them for you. So I don't really need to do it on this, but we will because I'm playing with them. Um, if you do a lot of vinyl bags or if you've got a domestic, I highly recommend these. Um, I've done a video on all the tools in my workroom, studio, whatever. Um, and I've got a link to like an eBay version. They're just leatherwork tool pliers. And you can get them in different widths. So you can get skinny ones, you can get even wider ones than that. These ones are just under 40 mil. Uh, but they come like huge ones as well. So you just got to remember the wider you go, the less squished you're potentially going to get it with your hand force. So I went with the, the whatever that size is, 35 or 40 or something. Um, they did have like a 60, but I decided that that was too big. And I just need to usually squish little seams. So the little uh, ones were going to work for me. And little ones were cheaper, so that's an added bonus. I don't know why I'm putting this many clips on. I don't need to. I guess I'm just showing you lots of clips. Um, so I'm going to put my top stitching up to four because that's what I like to look at today. And I'm actually going to stitch it from the top. So I'm going to squish the bag like this. You could also turn the bag inside out. Or you could use your cylinder arm. So tomorrow's video, I'll probably do that and use the cylinder arm just because it needs some more loving. Now, if you're new to top stitching, do a quarter inch. If you're more advanced top stitching, you can do an eighth of an inch. Doesn't really matter. It's just easier to stay on your fabric when your seam's bigger. So if you're new to top stitching, the quarter inch will still look nice. It's just going to be easier for you to stitch until you get the hang of it. Or you could be super fancy and do two, one at an eight, eighth and one at a quarter. So I'm just bringing the bag around, squishing it down as I go. Just want to make sure that everything's out of your way. As you can tell, I'm going nice and slow with my top stitch. There's no hurry. You just want to get it nice and neat. Nearly back to the start. So I'm going to go through one hole and back stitch. Done. I also did it on a busy part of the pattern so that you're not going to see where I joined it. Look at that! Looking wonderful. I like it. I like it. So the only thing we've got left to do is put our zipper pull on. And then put a stopper on the end. Now you can get um, hardware that actually goes on the end of your zips and you kind of screw it on and they look really pretty. Um, I don't have any. Right, zipped up. So now we just need to put an end on. So what I have done is this piece of vinyl is the width of your zipper tape and twice the width in length. So for me, this is one and a quarter by two and a half. Uh, so when I fold this over and stitch it on, it's going to be a perfect square on the end. Now, you don't have to do it that way. You can make it a different size. You also don't have to do it out of vinyl. You can do it out of fabric. You just got to remember that if you're going to do fabric, you've got to fold all your edges in. So I'm just going to pop that on there like so. And the double-sided tape holds it in place for me. And then I'm going to rainbow stitch it because I can. 
So I want to start here. I'm going to do about an eighth of an inch. And then I'm going to pivot with my needle down. And instead of bringing the bag through the throat, you just spin it back the other way. Get it right where you want it. And then back down. And rainbow stitched. Yay! There you go. Your bag is done. So you've got your two front zipper pockets, which are separated because we stitched them. Um, zipper closure, zipper pocket inside, and slip pockets. It's got everything. Hope that was helpful, guys. Um, and tomorrow I'm doing a crossbody version and I'm going to add a few other things to it. So stay tuned for that. Bye.